After having a bad time with Way of the Samurai 1 and 2, I didn't want to review the other two, but alas, I need to fill out my quota. At least 5 videos per month on every 5th day, with maybe something on the 30th, but not always. So let's dive into the third game, Way of the Samurai 3, and see if it's any good, or was it just nostalgia blinding me towards this cult series? Only one way to find out. The game takes place during the well-known Sengoku period, the Warren States period of Japan, between various warlords for control of the land of the rising sun. You fight and in battle and are badly hurt. You then have different ways to start, such as attacking the pillagers or asking for help. Choices are better than ever with outright attacking or begging as options to allowing you to intervene in certain scenes or to cause total chaos, or even just a game over for you. Anyways, the location is Amana, a fictional land ruled by Damyo Fujimori Shuzen. This feudal lord started an uprising against his former lord of the now extinct Sakurai clan. The Fujimori clan is tyrannical, and because of this, there's been several groups who oppose them in various degrees. Of course, it's up to you to decide who to side with and who to kill, if any. Which leads to different endings. This time, there's more than ever. For example, if you want to fight the Fujimori clan, you can swear an orf to Oka clan. A group of lowlifes that have no respect for law, order, or honor. With options to side with other members who view things differently from their leader. Or even being a loyal lapdog, you could also just kill the leader of Oka clan and take over. There's so many options that I just can't be bothered to list them all. It's insane just how much more player freedom there is in this game compared to the previous. Take note CD Projekt Red and Bethesda. This is how you make choices and consequences and branching paths. You have several different characters you may or may not meet during your playthrough depending on your actions and choices. This means if you don't go to a certain location at certain times, you can indeed miss out on key characters that could lead to different endings and plots if you choose to pursue them. The Fujimori clan has many members. The leader and tyrant, Shuzen. The loyal lapdog, Masato Masatsugu. I'm trying my best to pronounce things here. The bloodthirsty skank, Arahime. Then there's the questionable Shinosuke. For Oka clan, you have the leader, Jinjiro, the former Sakurai clan member and dreamer of re establishing the former clan, Yuma. Then there's the cold shoulder female samurai, Isuse, who seems to have a motive you can pursue if you choose to. I tried and never made the right choice. Damn my desire for a badass female samurai. It's just like Watts 2 all over again. Except this one isn't a bloodthirsty sadist. Then there's... Takatane Village. All oppressed by being overworked and overtaxed by Shuzen. With three key characters that have a past you can dig up if you choose to. The leader of the village is an elderly man, Umemia. Then he has two children under his care. Ose, a young girl who's very protective of her people, and then there's the brat Kota. There's several more characters you can run across, but these three gr groups are the key factions to the plot. The game still has a bit of jank, especially with the camera, yet it's also very much more playable than before. You can tell they finally started to figure out what they were going for. I barely had any problems moving around and fighting. In fact, the combat was very satisfying. Just slicing up people and flinging them into the air or kicking them. Using different weapons from swords to spears or even your fists. Yes, you can fight with your fists in a sword fight if you don't have a weapon equipped. And weapon weight will determine the impact of your weapon and the speed. The game is still punishing in certain parts so be sure to grab healing items to stay alive. To which, thankfully, they brought back healing items laying around from the first game, and you no longer need to just buy everything. You can still buy everything, you can sell stuff, 
but the fact that they just have healing items laying around in various places is great to have again. And of course, you can be dishonorable and take crops from people or offerings at shrines and graves. After all, what's more important to you? Staying alive and being dishonorable or dying and being honorable? To which brings me to minigames, because one I played could kill me if I was not careful. You have a variety of minigames, like ringing a bell for an old woman who mourns for her dead lover, or cutting up a fish within a time limit. You can even slice up vegetables, but be careful, because you can get hurt during this. The crazy old lady does like to chuck stuff at you. You also have a few more, like making sticky rice cakes, or taking up jobs for various people like finding lost children or beating up thieves. There's a lot more side activities this time around, and they're more doable, unlike Way of the Samurai 2 jobs being so inadequate leading you to fail the job for not giving you better details. For the first time and only time, you now have partners to help you along the way. That is if you find them and meet their requirements. With 14 possible partners, there's enough variety for every player, such as a widow spear fighter that you have to pay for protection at night, or even the return of several main characters from the first way of the samurai game which I'll lead to you to find yourself. But each one comes with a count or two, such as some not being able to fight and only being useful as being camels, or that they will steal stuff from you like weapons, money, and items from your safe. Yeah, I rarely use them because of this. What a stupid design decision. Imagine playing Skyrim and Lydia just steals all your potions at random from your inventory and any containers in Bree's home. What? It's just, just a fucking bad mechanic that ruins what could have been a staple to the series going forward, but instead dies within Way of the Samurai 3. Yes, in Way of the Samurai 4, you have no companions. You also heard me mention a safe. You get a safe house, just like in Watts 2. But this time, it's more obvious, and it's right near the start. You can easily stash everything you want there to protect in case you might die or you just need to loosen up your inventory to make room for more stuff. But the problem is certain partners will steal your stuff when you hire them. Such as one will steal your swords, another might steal your money, another might go and take your items. So, be careful when you have partners. They are total D-bags. So use the safe house to stash things, and of course sleep to pass time. But don't go to one if you have a partner hired. Dismiss the partner before you go to your safe house to keep your items safe. The first two games only had a handful of endings, like six or four or whatever and only a couple paths you could take. So for the third game, you now have 22 endings total, most of which are just variants of others, like killing Shuzen in three different ways, or found re help rebuilding the Sakurai clan in a couple different ways. So it's, it, it seems like there's more, but there's also really not that much more. It's just like slight variants of one particular ending. So, yeah, 22 endings, but not really any variety. So you can kill shoes into three different ones. You can uh, choose to help rebuild Sakurai Clan in like three different ones. You can kill off the entire population and get the secret ending, which is the Grim Reaper ending. You can uh, get yourself killed. You can be dishonorable. You can get the true ending. You can get the ending that involves love. You can side with Isune, you can take over Oka Clan, you can run away from Oka Clan. There's just a lot of options, but they're really not that much different from one another. And of course, out of all these 22, one is a secret and one is the true ending. 
The last thing I want to talk about is the PC port. Given that this was a PS3 game at one point, how well does it play? Are there cons like only controllers can be used to play? Or stability, especially with Windows 10 and 11 and the like? You can use keyboard and mouse, you can play for controller, and it runs just fine on Windows 10. I don't know about Windows 11, because honestly, I'm dreading upgrading to Windows 11, and I sure as hell ain't going to the vegan community that is Linux. The only time I had an issue with this game was changing the resolution. After starting the game up a second time, and then changing the resolution, I had no problems ever again. So I have no complaints about the PC port. It runs just fine, and I had no other problems outside that one little crash. Overall, I was shocked to find that this entry was actually good. It's a bit rough in some areas, but otherwise playable, unlike the first two games on the PS2. Watch 3 for PC is a good game worth checking out. In fact, start with this one, then try the fourth game, but avoid 1 and 2 at all costs. Anyways, not sure when I'll get to the fourth game, but it'll happen one day. Till then, see y'all later.